let's go ahead and continue learning about electron configurations. Now we did learn about orbital notations with or orbital not notations are the ones where we have the little arrows like this. Then we learned about electron configuration, our standard electron configuration in class where instead of the arrows we put exponents. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn about noble gas configuration. And what noble gas configuration does is it shortens the electron configuration to make it a more manageable um, electron configuration for us to deal with. Uh, the other thing too is it allows us to see the valence electrons and um, it allows us to see the electrons that are in the outermost energy level more easily. So let's go ahead and talk about what noble gas configuration is. The first thing that uh, we want to um, do is define what the noble gases are. Noble gases are, if you take a look, they are this right here. Uh, by the way, we're on page 15 in your booklet. So they are um, this last column right here. And so if we look at the periodic table, these right here are the noble gases. And what you do, it's really, really easy. To write the noble gas configuration, what you do is you find the element on the periodic table, so fluorine is right here. So we're gonna be doing the noble gas configuration for that. And you look at what is the noble gas on the row before it. Again, these are rows. The row before this one is this row. So what is the noble gas on the row before? Very easy, it's that. So that's the noble gas on the row before. And what you do is you take that noble gas and you write it in brackets. So we're gonna write that noble gas in brackets, so it's helium. And then what you do is you write the electron configuration for the row that the element is in. So you're only going to write it for the row that the element is in. So you're going to write that electron configuration, which these here are the two S's and these are the two P's. And then fluorine is one, two, three, four, five elements into the P orbital. So we will end up with 2S2 and then 2 p Five. All right, let's go ahead and do sodium now. So here's sodium. And again, what you do is you go to the noble gas in the row before, so easy, it's neon. You write that in brackets. And then what you do is you write the electron configuration for the row that the element is in, and sodium is at the very beginning of the row, so it's gonna be very easy. We just write, uh, this is going to be here. Um, again, this, these, this is the S block, so this is the three S's. So it's gonna be three S, and then sodium is one into the S block, so it's three S one. Now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna pause real quick, and I wanna show you something. If you take a look, this right here, happens to be the noble gas configuration, I mean the electron configuration for neon. So notice how that is the electron configuration for neon, and then notice what's after that. So we write neon, neon represents that electron configuration, and then we write the electron configuration for the uh, sodium, after, or for that row that sodium is in. All right, let's go ahead and do the electron configure or the noble gas configuration for nickel now all right so we're gonna do it for nickel so if you look at the periodic table here's nickel right here this is the d block and again what you do is you go to the noble gas that's on the row before it very easy you should be able to do that and you write that in brackets and then what you do is you write the electron configuration for the row that the element is in. And notice how it's in this row right here. So we've got 4s. And then the d's go down by 1. These happen to be 3d's. And so you have 4s2. And then we've got... Here's nickel right here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements into the D block. So it's going to be three D and it's eight elements into the D block. Again, notice how this right here ends up being 
the electron configuration for argon. And so when we put argon in brackets, it's representing this entire part of the electron configuration. And then we write the electron configuration for the row that the element is in. And notice how it's just that last part right there. All right, rubidium. All right, so uh, rubidium is right here. It's in the five S's. You go to the noble gas before. Krypton, and then you write the electron configuration for everything after that, for the row that the element is in. So this is in the 1s's, and it's one element into the 1s, I mean, I'm sorry, the 5s's, so it's going to be 5s1. So again, it's the 5s's. And that's it. Um, again, you can always identify the element by looking at this last part here. So it's kind of like graphing or coordinates. So you just go to 5s1, you find where the 5s's are, it's the first one in there. This one you would go to 3d's and then 8, which is 8 elements in the 3d's. So now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to write Lewis valence electron dot structures. And Lewis valence Electron dot structures show the symbol of an element and its number of valence electrons. And the valence electrons are those electrons that are on the outermost energy level. And valence electrons are what determine how something chemically reacts. And I'm going to go ahead and write. Here is uh, the Lewis dot structure for chlorine. Notice how I'm writing it. And we're going to talk about um, how to how to write the Lewis dot structure for each element. The first thing you do is you write the element's symbol. The symbol represents the atom's core, or nucleus, and inner electrons. So it represents the nucleus and the inner electrons. The next thing you want to do is determine the group number. And to determine the group number, all you got to do is find the element. We used chlorine as an example. And you look at what column it's in. Now notice how there's two numbers here um, that tells us which column it's in. The number you look at is the one with the A. So if you take a look, we, look, we have it as 7A. And that is the number of valence electrons. So phosphorus here is in the 5A. And again, that's the number of valence electrons. And so if we go to magnesium. It's in the 2A. But what about these right here? Because I know someone's thinking this. What about those? Well, what I'll tell you is you will never deal with those. So don't worry about them. Um, they have, we'll, we'll talk about them uh, later on. For now, all we're going to be dealing with are the columns with the A's. Uh, now, just a little disclaimer. This right here is in the 8A column. So it has eight valence electrons. Helium is also in the 8A, but it does not have eight valence electrons. This is the only exception to all of these. Helium only has two total electrons, so it only has two valence electrons. So that is an exception. Once you determine the group number, the group number tells you the number of valence electrons. Then what you wanna do is you wanna put a dot every 90 degrees until the valence electrons um, present in the atom is achieved. Now something that I want to point out is there's one other thing that we want to do and I'm going to redo this one right here. So chlorine has seven valence electrons and we know that by looking here you can see it's got seven valence electrons. Now when you put a dot you're going to go one, two, three, four and notice how after the fourth one it pairs up. Five, six, and if we only had six, we would stop there, but we have seven, so, and then seven. So notice how after four, they start to pair up. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and go through these practice problems. Now, something to keep in mind. You should never have more than eight valence electrons. If you have more than eight valence electrons, you're doing something wrong. So aluminum, let's go ahead and take a look at where aluminum is on the periodic table. Okay, so there's aluminum. 
and it's in the 3A column, so that means it's going to have three valence electrons. So it's in the 3A, that means it'll have three valence electrons, and so the Lewis dot structure will be this. All right, fluorine. Let's go and take a look at fluorine. Fluorine is right here. It's in the 7A. So it'll have seven valence electrons. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hydrogen is in the 1A. So there's hydrogen. It's in the 1A. So it's going to have one valence electron. Easy peasy. Sulfur. Sulfur's right here. It's in the 6A. It's going to look like this. One, two, three, four. Then we pair them up. So that one has two pairs of electrons. And the neon is in the 8A. It's going to have eight valence electrons. And it's going to look like this. Okay, and I'm actually going to change the color so that we can actually understand what's happening. And here are some um, examples of how to incorrectly do this. So notice how this first example here uh, has got 13 electrons. Again, you can never have more than eight. This second example here of how to incorrectly draw these, notice how the dots aren't going in the correct order. Again, you start on the, you start with one dot and you go 90 degrees um, until you've got all the valence electrons. And then again, this one here also not in the correct order. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at arsenic. Arsenic is in the 5A column, and so it will have five valence electrons. We go one, two, three, four, and five. Take a, I'll give you a moment to uh, go ahead and pause the video, write down this electron configuration. Um, and then it's, it's asking, highlight where are the valence electrons in this electron configuration? And so where are those valence electrons? Well, if you take a look there, there are, um, the, the number in the front tells you the energy level. So that's the first energy level. Here's the second, here's the third. This one's also the third. And then this is the fourth energy level. And the electrons that are in the outermost energy level are going to be the valence electrons. So you have to ask yourself, which, what is the highest energy level? And in this situation, the highest energy level is the fourth energy level. The fourth energy level is the highest energy level. And the fourth energy level being the highest, you can see that there's three electrons there and two electrons there for a total of five electrons. And so let's go ahead and circle these two things here. And those represent the valence electrons. 